Good afternoon, everyone. David Gross with Condi Systems here with uh, Jimmy Lamb with Sawgrass to cover the Creative Studio software. A um, couple of housekeeping items. Everybody is in listen-only mode. We will be answering questions at the end of the broadcast, so uh, find that little place on your, your uh, webinar panel to ask those questions. Jimmy can see the questions. I can't, so if a question comes up that is um, just really a great question to ask, answer right then and there, then we will cover it. We will be recording this webinar and placing it, of course, on Condi TV. And then, of course, I'll have some uh, uh, one of those kind of special offers at the very end for folks that um, have been part of the webinar. Jimmy, how are you? I'm doing great, David. Uh, great to be here and looking forward to um, our presentation today. Uh, we have a lot of good information and um, to share with everybody, and that's what we're going to do. And like you're saying, we are recording it, right? We are recording. It. I know I had a problem last time. I don't know what happened. Uh, that was like the first one didn't record, but right now it says it's recording. So, crossing my fingers, the whole thing gets recorded. Um, if not, I'll just go back and redo it myself. I by myself, I've done that before. <laughs> and for folks getting started, Jimmy, just a couple of questions for you. Who in the world is Sawgrass? Oh, well, I don't know. Uh, but anyway, Sawgrass <laughs> is who I work for, so I better know, right? Uh, at Sawgrass, we manufacture uh, sublimation inks and sublimation printing systems, uh, which are really geared towards the, the startup because um, our main printers are desktop units which makes them affordable easy to fit into your shop and of course we do have one a little bit larger our VJ628 which is more of an industrial unit uh, with a wider printing field but but that's what we do is we manufacture inks uh, the software to work with the inks and, and the printers to print with the inks well and I'm gonna answer it just a, I'm gonna answer it a little bit differently for okay. the people because I have to do stuff all the time out there uh, helping our clients be successful and first of all sawgrass along with our company are some of the true pioneers in the world of sublimation um, absolutely no doubt about that and uh, we all fell in love with sublimation a gazillion years ago for me it was probably about 26 and what we do is we provide uh, comprehensive solutions um, so that there's a very high probability of your success as opposed to piecemealing this printer with this ink, with this bulk system, with this uh, profile, with these settings, and of course having no one that you can really turn to for support. But in the case of Sawgrass and our solutions, it's a very comprehensive um, support system. Components are carefully chosen. And, and that leads to what I would call, call very consistent output. And so Creative Studio is one of those bucket list items for you out there that um, I think addresses a significant need. And that is a person that um, may, for instance, have some great ideas, sales and marketing. They may, may know who they want to sell to. They may have some artwork ideas. But out of the box, they, they simply don't have the graphic skills to immediately begin selling products. And so Sawgrass and I talked about this many years ago is how do we deal with folks that are certainly motivated to get into digital decorating uh, because it's so really cool with all the substrates we have, just thousands and thousands. And um, again, this is our really our, our passion, our love. And so Sawgrass said, hey, let's take a look at this. And uh, that's what we're going to talk about today is Creative Studio. Go ahead, Jimmy. Wow, David, you <laughs> you really did say, say that one quite well. So uh, covered a lot of good information there. Um, but yes, yeah, so our focus today, Creative Studio. And uh, as David was saying, this is a product that we did develop at Sawgrass to help people starting out who were graphically challenged, kind of like me, uh, to be able to start creating images fairly quickly for sublimation use, okay? Um, it's not meant to replace Photoshop or CorelDRAW or Illustrator, but it's meant to be an alternative if you don't need that level of sophistication. So 
what I'll do is kind of walk you through a couple of slides here and introduce you to it, and then we're just going to go in and play with it some, and I'm going to show you some of my favorite tips and tricks with the system while we play a little bit. So, all right, so sublimation made, graphics made easy. I mean, that was our whole purpose here. Uh, if, if you really sit down for your first time in front of Photoshop, you've never used it, it can be overwhelming. Great program but it can be overwhelming. And we wanted folks to be able to just put things together that they needed to be able to create their image that they wanted to print for sublimation, get it done quickly, get it done intuitively, and, and get it printed and pressed and start making some money. So that's exactly what we did uh, was by putting this together. Now, it is internet driven, and there's a couple of reasons why it's internet driven. One nice thing about internet driven program, meaning that it's in the cloud, is that if you can log into it, you can pretty much use it. So what I mean by that is if you're a user of Windows, you can access it. If you're a user of Mac, you can access it. If you're running a tablet with iOS, you can access it. Running a tablet with Android, you can access it, you can use it. So that's very useful because, you know, for example, some people have Windows 10, some have Windows 8, some 7, it doesn't matter. We didn't have to write a new version of the program for every single system. We just have one version. And if you can log into it, you can use it. I mean, that's the key, okay? All right, so that's one reason. Uh, the second reason is when we're able to need to update it, we're able to update it, and you don't have to download and install anything new. It's just done automatically. So there it is, okay? That's why we do the Internet-based. Now, it's actually part of Virtuoso. And our Virtuoso, David was mentioning systems, okay, integrated systems. And our Virtuoso system is composed of printers, the SG400, SG800 inkjet printers, our Sublijet HD ink, which was created specifically for those printers, and at the same time, the printers were designed around that ink, uh, and of course, the Creative Studio system. Now, all of that comes with your purchase, and there's no extra charge for Creative Studio. It's included when you purchase one of the Virtuoso printers, okay, at no charge. Um, if you decide you don't want to use it, that's fine. You don't actually have to use it, but it's there for you to use if you choose to do so. Um, this also includes a piece of software called VPM, Virtuoso Print Manager, which is our printer driver, and again, it comes to you at no charge. Uh, it has a color management system and a print driving system as well. Now, Creative Studio is, is really and truly the first integrated graphic system created specifically for sublimation, okay? And it has five key components, which we'll see in just a moment when we go in. It has the designer, the stock design library, product templates, art templates, and a print and color manager, okay? So we're going we're gonna to take a look at those pieces. Uh, it has a very user-friendly workspace. We wanted it to be simple to understand, not too many drop-downs, not a lot of confusion, uh, and of course, on all works on all the different devices. Okay, doesn't matter which device you have, you get pretty much the same toolbars and definitely the same tools and functions. And that's really cool because you can hand somebody an iPad, and they can be logged into the cloud designing and then print from your Mac and PC. Yes. Um, I also like to point out it's product centric, so we built it around products. You know, historically people would create a graphic and then figure out how to put it on the product. But here we ask you what product do you want to put it on, and then you design your graphic based on the actual product itself, which is a little different way of thinking. Uh, it includes a stock design library, which means thousands, and I mean thousands, of design elements. Uh, graphic and photo images, monograms, shapes, backgrounds and borders, sports, occupation, just lots of different things in there. And you can upload your own designs as well. Okay. Now, the limitation on upload is you can only upload JPEGs and PNGs at this time. You cannot upload vectors at this time. Okay. Just want to be clear on that. But um, you can do those yourself. You have a place where it's going to upload into your library. It's not shared with the rest of the world. But, you know, this right there is very important because that means the day you open it, you have access to lots and lots of basically clip art that you can start working with immediately instead of having to go out and invest in your own library. It also comes with product templates, and we'll look at those a little bit more. But um, product templates are essentially a graphical template that 
is built around the actual substrate that you want to decorate. And it it's very interactive, meaning that, for example, if you look right here, you can see that there's a, a, mon, um, a megaphone template here for a megaphone substrate. And it's actually cut off some of the image. And, and that's part of the, the neat thing about the actual template for the product is that it will not allow you to build components of your design outside the boundaries of the product. It, it, it's going to only show you what fits within the boundaries. It also has an area, a bleed area, which I'll tell you more about in just a few minutes, which is a very important thing too. So bottom line, it's going to make it a lot easier for designing uh, for your sublimation products. And we add our templates day and night because of all the new products we come out with to right. keep Creative Studio open. But hey, having uh, a program like this that makes it easy instead of having to download and open a template, it's right there for you. Yes. Then we have art templates, a little different from product templates. Product templates are basically um, an outline of a true product, where those art templates are templates composed of multiple pieces of art. And th these are all right, so we're going to continue on, and I have gone over to uh, the entry screen for Creative Studio so we can come in and play a little bit. Now, I was telling you about you know the different components and whatnot. Um, the first time or any time that you log in, you start with a product wizard, and this means this is where you start with all your you know, product selections. And you can see there's a lot of them here, and there are subcategories and just uh, there's just unbelievable amount of these. I think it's like 1,400 of these in here and growing. So, uh, and these are real products, you know, the part numbers and everything on them. So what I want to do is I'm going to start out playing a little bit. Um, and I think I'm going to start with a t-shirt. So I'm going to go to clothing and then I'm going to click on apparel and click my next button here. And uh, it will show me the options that I can pull from. And I'm going to use, let's see, um, I believe I'm going to use the White Vapor Basic T-Short Sleeve, just, just a good little standard there. And it's uh, it's got some different colors. And if it's available in colors, the colors will be listed here that you can choose. But I'm going to stick with the white. And then I have to select my page size. And that's important because if there is a choice of page sizes, make sure you choose the one that you plan to print with or the closest match. Um, I'm going to go with 11 by 17 since I'm using an SG800 here. And so we're going to set that up and then we're going to click Start Designer. And what it does is it shows us the t-shirt and it shows us the work area. Now this work area is based on that size paper. This is based on 11 by 17. If I chose 13 by 19, it would be a larger work area. So our design will only work in here. Okay, Anything that we do outside won't work. Okay, And you'll see that as we go. Now. If you're starting from scratch, you can start as simple as click text. You'll always see the word sample text show up, and then you just type in whatever you want, okay? And click OK, and, and it would show up. But guess what? It's too big to fit. So you're, you're seeing that already, that it's, it's working to your advantage. You may not like that it doesn't fit, but it's just telling you, hey, that's too big. And we can shrink it down using just our nodes and we can click and drag so we can we can do numerous things to it um, we can stretch it like this if we want to do it uh, we can rotate it so the nice thing is it's, it's pretty intuitive it's like if there's something you can grab with your mouse grab it you know and you can do what you want with that um, if you want to change the color and I'm not going to do an a in-depth on color right now. I will say when you click color, you'll go to a standardized charts of color. These are sublimation-friendly colors. You, you click on it and say apply, and, and it's applied. Now, if you didn't see the color you wanted, you can actually try and create it multiple ways. Um, I'm working with just my mouse moving around. And I always watch that top bar and see the color is changing. I mean, maybe what I really meant to have was a really nice blue. If I knew the RGB values I could put in here, or I can even move the sliders for the RGB to kind of fine tune it. So if I create a custom color, I would give it a name, um, and we'll call this JL Blue for lack of anything better. 
and click Save, and it goes into your custom palette. Now, where did that come from? Um, right here where it says Select Palette, you have two choices. You have the Sawgrass Color Show, which is the original, or you have your custom colors, so that means you never lose those custom colors that you create. Uh, and that's important because in the past, you create some custom and you lose it. Um, if you want to use it, you apply it, and there it is. Now, I will tell you we cannot do um, text effects like you see in Corel and those programs. Okay, So the reality is you're, you're kind of limited to what we can do with this. Um, I'm going to zoom in a little bit, though, and show you a couple of little tricks of mine. So I'm going to go over the zoom key and just start zooming in because it'll make it easier to see what I'm working on if we, we bring it in some. And so what I'm going to do is uh, I want to change that font. We don't do it at text. Everything that we put in our work area is called an object. So you think about objects and you go to the object button and that gives you all this great control. Down here you see text font. And I'm going to go to a little bit thicker font right there. I'm actually going to change the word. I'm going to change it to a team name, Pirates, which is the team mascot for the university I went to. And I'm going to stretch it out just a little bit there. Now, what can I do with this as far as maybe a text effect? Um, we do give you the ability to outline it. And you can outline it in pretty much any color that you wish. Um, we'll use... purple. Um, we can change the width of that outline and click OK. And you see we, we put an outline on there. Uh, the other thing we can do with text is we have envelopes, which mean that we can actually do some arcs or some bridges. Okay, but I'm going to stick with this one for right now. So uh, a lot of times people do say, hey, I wish I could do things like you know, shadowing, which we can do with some of the other programs. Uh, so first thing I'm going to do is get rid of that outline, and I'm going to show you a, you know, a simple way you can do a shadow. Um, I'm going to change the Pirates to purple. That is um, the actual team, my college team. That's one of the colors. It's not LSU. This is going to be purple and gold here. But if you needed to do like a shadow, uh, you have Pirates right there. An easy thing to do is just go and do a copy-paste. It's called Duplicate here. And so what I did was I just duplicated that in the exact same size and font. This time I'm going to change it to gold because it's purple and gold, the team colors. And, you know, you can go in here and put it basically behind pirates, unless you wanted gold on top. Let's say we wanted gold as our shadow. When you put things, each object that we put in here is in a layer. So it's on top of the other. So the yellow is actually on top of the purple. How can I fig figure, um, move it back? Right here under the object list, it says move down, and it put it behind it. And so now you have the purple with the gold shadow. And that becomes a way that, hey, okay, I can make a shadow, even though I didn't think I could, okay, because the function's not there. So sometimes you just have to, to play a little bit and see if you can't recreate some of the special stuff you want to do anyway. All right? Okay, so I'm going to zoom back out here, and let's just zoom back to the design area. Actually, let's go to the product. There we go. I'm actually going to get rid of this. So if I hit clear, what it's going to do is not take out the t-shirt, but just the image. Okay, because I want to go and show you another cool little um, function here. So this time I'm going to take a, like a, a business logo or client logo of some type. So I clicked on images. When you click on images, you're going to see right here what's called my images. So this is anything that you upload will be in the my images section. The stock images that come with the system are over here on the left-hand side. So when you look down here, you'll see all the different categories of stock images, and a lot of them have subcategories, as you see here, an idea of dance or celebration or whatnot. And any of those categories you click into, then you're going to see what's available for you. One of the things that we did recently was make this a lot easier to work with, and we put in a search function, which we didn't have before. So uh, with the search function, if you wanted to find um, a flag, for example, I don't know what kind of flag, it's going to pull up anything that's been tagged as a flag, and I bet there's a lot of them, so it may take a minute for them all to come up. So anything that's considered a flag, and you see there's lots of different things there, came up. So the search engine is pretty nice uh, to have uh, available. But I'm going to go back to my images for my next little demo. So we're going to click My Images, and you can see here they are. 
I'm going to pull this logo right here, which is called Beach Club. And it brings it onto the shirt, and guess what? It doesn't fit because it's bigger than the sheet of paper, which I chose, which is 11 by 17, and those boundaries there. But that's okay because I can resize it. So just grabbing the corners, I'm going to resize it and then place it where I want on the shirt. And now I have it on the shirt. Now, suppose you want to show this to the customer. Okay, You can use something called a product mock-up maker. And it's up here under the zoom key. There's a little tiny down arrow next to the zoom key. So if you click on that, you will see product mock-up maker. Now when I click on this, what it does is it generates an image of the t-shirt without any of those uh, guidelines there and the printed image on it. So it gives you a pretty good representation of what the final product should look like. And then at this point, you can just say, okay, I'm going to download this, and we'll call it uh, Beach T. And it's going to save it in a JPEG format uh, so that you can share that with your client, your customer. Okay? Uh, you could email it to them, or uh, maybe you have a printed sheet of some of these things, and uh, they can you know, go through that. Now, I don't look at this as just a proofing tool. A lot of people look at this like, oh, you know, it's uh, you can do proofing and, and whatnot, and you can't. But think about this. If you're going to show one thing to a client, why not show them other stuff too, okay? Um, you know, if they're interested in a T-shirt and it's a beach club, uh, maybe we can show them some other items to consider. So maybe we should say, hey, you should have a sign. You know, kind of like welcoming people in or just, you know, for your, your business there. So watch this. I'm going to change the product, but I'm not going to change the image. And so I'm going to click on product. And um, I don't know if sign will pull up what I want. A lot of times we use things like plaques and Chromalux components to make a sign. So I'm just going to really go to Chromalux. And I'm going to take a, a wall panel, small, and use that for my sign. So... Maybe I want to use the 12 by 12 aluminum panel white gloss, so I'm going to bring that in, choose my paper size. Uh, right now it just says it's only going to work for 13 by 19, and, that, and you know why? Because that's, it was a 12 by 12. It wouldn't work for 11 by 17. So here you go. You see it on the sign now. So now I can use the product mock-up maker again and say, well, let's show the customer what the sign would look like with their logo. So we could do the same thing. And now we make the, the sign, we save it, we download it. So you follow me on this. It's like I'm making a little sample kit for the customer without actually printing and pressing, you know, the images. So I can just show them ideas, you know, of how this might work. Um, another one of my favorites here, let's just continue with this concept, is something that Condi has that I just absolutely love. I think it's a fantastic product. I use it myself and it really holds up, and it's floor mats. Now, I, I experimented earlier. I wanted to see if floor mat would bring it up, so I went with floor mat, and this is an example of having the right keyword, and floor mat didn't work, okay? So it's actually loaded, I think, as a doormat, but I'm just going to put mat. But these things are great, okay? Um, did it bring it up this time? Let's go further down. Um, I know it's in here because I saw it earlier. And maybe it's loaded under a different terminology. So, listen, I'm going to tell you about it anyway. I don't want to spend too much time digging through because sometimes we got to find the exact right thing, okay? Um, basically, it's a floor mat. And it has a rubber backing, and you can print on the front. Now, if you did a full bleed from edge to edge, you probably need a pretty big printer like the VJ628. But I've done these with my SG800 by just putting a logo right in the middle of the floor mat. And these floor mats I love because I have tested them in the sunlight. I have bleached them, everything else, and it has held up. Uh, and it's just not popping up in this particular search that I did. So my apologies there. Um, but let's just say, for example, that this was the floor mat. We'll use this one is pretty close for what I want to do. And I'll put it this way. And so this is the idea. This is about what you're going to see with a floor mat. But again, you know, now you're creating the floor mat. I will tell you the true floor mat image um, has 
a black sort of border just like the real thing and, and I'm telling you these things they're not expensive at all and you, I think they're like and David I apologize if I get the number wrong it seems like they're like six or seven dollars each and they may but, be a little bit more than that but more, one but, of my favorite floor mat kind of products is uh, the car mats um, they're they're just incredibly popular especially with the ladies could be just a simple monogram right. design and you've got front and rear mats yeah, and what I was getting at is the, the, the mats that I have done for, um, I do them for boaters with the boat names on them, and we're selling them for $35, $40 a piece, and, you know, it's just a simple print and press, you know, and, and you got it. So, um, again, just finding the right keywords here and making sure that sometimes when things get loaded in, they get loaded in on keywords that are different from my brain, so it, it, it takes me a minute to figure it out, but... Um, kind of keeping what we're talking about uh, with this beach club, um, you might have, for example, we had the t-shirts. Uh, let's see if we have a tote under here or just a bag. And there we go. So you see some of the different bags are available where, again, maybe we're going to show them like the drawstring backpack. You always got to know what the right word is, right? Um, and in this one, I'll do it as an 11 by 17. And now what happens is this is now on the drawstring backpack. So, awesome. again, I can go to product mock-up maker. Looks pretty realistic. And so the beauty of this is you, you could create maybe half a dozen different items and then present them to the customer and say, hey, have you considered this, Consider this? These all go hand in hand, and probably you're going to broaden your sale. And that's what I like about the product mock-up maker. It becomes a nice marketing tool, okay, a marketing tool. All right, another thing that we have, there are a lot of things we've changed since we first started this. Um, so let me go and pull up, a let me clear this out. I'm going to pull up a totally different product um, and a, a totally different angle to go with. So let's go back into our Chromalux, and uh, we might be doing a desktop photo panel. And let's say that uh, we are working with the 6x6 six six, uh, flat top panel with easel. And we'll bring that in letter vertical. And now let's see if we can put, go put an image on here. And I have an image of, uh, this time I'm going to choose uh, the little girl. So when I bring the little girl in, actually her whole picture is rectangular. And let me just bring it down so you can see a little better. You know, her picture is rectangular, but you got a square product. And, and so, you know, at one time all of her images were locked. You can only move it, you know, from the corner. So it, it moved in proportion. But then we unlocked them so you can do this. Well, that's going to get you in a lot of trouble if you do that, right? Because, you know, she doesn't look quite the same anymore. So uh, let's go back to where we were on that. Um, but we did add a crop feature in, and the crop feature now allows us to crop it in Creative Studio. So in this particular case, I have this selected. It is an object that is selected. So I'm going to go to my object menu, and I'm going to go to crop. And now we're able to actually crop it right here on the screen so we don't need all that back there in the background and I'm trying to get this as close to a true square as I can so you may not need you know the lower part there of her but the idea is can we really crop it down so we get the important features uh, and so I'm going to click OK and it's going to ask me to save it because it's going to save it as new image I'll call it girl 2 and now it will save it and it will show the cropped image in here. Now you can see we have almost a perfect square. And in this case, I'll go ahead and stretch it out. And I may have to do just a little bit more, you know, moving around to get it to fit right. Like I want all the hat up there. That's important. I don't want all of her fingers, you know. Um, but you see now we have been able to make it fit better to the actual shape that we want to put it on. And, and that makes it so much easier to work with pictures because you cannot distort the picture. It, it just it's not acceptable you know um, so now we have her there she looks pretty darn good ready to go uh, and you can add in text if you want to add in text or anything else and then you can go and print now 
one of the key things here on a product template that I didn't really point out yet, when you look at a product template, any of them, you see a white area and then you see a gray area around the outer edge. The white area is the same shape and size as the actual substrate. The gray area is a boundary that is slightly larger than the actual substrate, and we call that a bleed. And the idea with sublimation is if we make our image slightly larger than the substrate and then print it out, when we combine the image with the substrate, since the image is actually sticking out a little bit wider than the actual substrate, it makes it easy to line things up. So if you're doing an image where you put you know, from edge to edge, and as you can see, this image covers the entire substrate. We call that full bleed. You always want to stretch it into that little gray area. Now, that gray area will print, but that area is also larger than the substrate, so it won't end up on the substrate. So, for example, if you had lettering that extended over into here, that lettering is not going to end up on the substrate. So make sure everything that's important is in the white area and everything that goes in that little gray boundary isn't important, okay, as far as the final product. So I'll show that more in action in just a minute because if you're doing full bleed, you see this is a great way to line things up. But sometimes we do images where we don't do a full bleed. So let me give you an example of how that works. By the way, all the product templates have that bleed area. It's so important. It makes things so much better for you, okay? So I'm going to go to a different product this time, and I am going to create... Let's see, I think it's under drinkware and bar accessories, coasters. So I'm going to take a coaster right here, three and a half by three and a half. Um, I'm going to use, well, letter vertical paper, that's fine. So there we have that, you can clearly see the bleed. And this time, let's go in and grab one of the templates. Now, image files are, are independent images. Templates are usually multiple uh, objects within one image. In other words, if you look at a true image, it could be like a football or a baseball, but if it was in a template format, it's probably a football or a baseball with maybe a player and some text. So that's kind of what the difference is. So if we go to an art template, let's say we want to make, um, we're going to make coasters for the 4th of July. So we want something patriotic to go on our coasters. So I'm going to choose patriotic and I'm going to select. Uh, I'm going to select this one right here. This is all part of this stock images, okay? And as I said, it's a template, so the template means it has multiple pieces in it. So when you're working with a template, um, anything that you're able to click on, you can actually modify. And if you look over here on the right-hand side, there's a lot of different elements here. Like, um, let's see, I clicked on freedom. If I wanted to change a word or resize freedom, I could do it. Um, let's see, I can probably get the individual star patterns at Statue of Liberty. There you see how it's highlighted. So these are individual elements, you know, within the actual design. That's what makes a template. Multiple elements, and if you can click on an element, you can do things like resize it, rotate it, delete it, or whatnot. Uh, so if I grab like um, these stars down here, and I didn't grab that right. There's more than one way to grab. You saw me trying to grab it. I was having a little trouble. Okay, I'm going to click stars and use these little icons over here. Instead of me grabbing it with a mouse, I got a star selected, and I can move it with this arrow key, and you see the stars under freedom are moving. Okay, so that's an alternate way. If we're having trouble grabbing something with our mouse, if you just highlight it out of the list and then use these buttons to manage it, you can do that. You can change colors. You can do all kinds of cool stuff. All right. But I'm really going to a specific place with all this. So looking at this particular item, it doesn't quite fit the coaster. And this time what I'm going to do is select all, which means select all the different elements together. So that means if I do a, a resize, everything resizes, and you can see it's doing it here in proportion. So I'm going to go ahead and blow it up a little bit, and you know parts of it are going into the bleed. I'm probably going to have to stretch it a little bit to uh, get it all to fit, which means it's a little disproportionate, right? Um, and maybe that's acceptable in this, okay? In this particular case, if I go to print it, I can probably see what's in the bleed and whatnot. 
Um, but it might be a little hard to line up, or it might just be you don't want to do what I did. You're just going to stick with that original sizing. Okay. So if we stick with the original sizing, and I'm going to bring it down just a little bit more, and you decide, hey, you know what, Jimmy, I, I didn't want to stretch it out like you did. I just want to keep the same proportions and print it like this. And I realize it doesn't go to the edges, but I'm okay with that. And this particular sign may look okay that way too, okay? But I'm going all this way for a reason, okay? All right, so here I'm going to save this. So I'm going to go click on Save. And you have two ways to save it. And I'm going to call it um, Coaster. <laughs> if you save in this format where it says My Templates Editable, that means that it's going to save it with all these little object areas or you can come back to later. You can resize. You can reproportion. It saves it with the actual um, Coaster product, everything. Okay, That's one format. The other one is non-editable, and we do that one for a reason. We actually do what we call flattened artwork. We lock it all in. Okay, It's all locked in. You can't change anything once you do it this way, but I'm doing it this way on purpose. Also notice what you get here, include product bleed line. If I click that, what happens is when it prints, it's actually going to print a very thin, faint line that would line up with the outer edge of that bleed so you have a reference point. Remember, this image doesn't go all the way into the bleed. As soon as I make this up with the uh, substrate, you won't see the image anymore. So I'm going to include my product bleed line. I'm going to click OK. And then I'm going to do something really cool. Okay. So I'm saving it first. Always takes a little longer because my, unit, my computer is driving the webinar as well as this. So save is complete. Okay. All right. So now I'm going to clear out of this. So let's get rid of the image. And for product, I'm going to go to something called blank canvas. And think of a blank canvas as just a blank sheet of paper. Okay, so if we go to blank canvas. Um, I'm going to choose, let's see, there's a 12 by 18 sheet of paper. And um, I was looking for... There's a lot of different size sheets on here. Some of them are specialized sheets, too, when we start talking about things like, you know, the larger printers and whatnot. Uh, why don't we use, out of this particular list, the, this is base, this is A3, so this is, um, A3 is about 11. About 11 by 7. 7. 11.7 yeah. by uh, yeah. 16 or 15 and a half. Yep. So we'll choose that one. And I'm going to bring this on. And now I'm going to go back into images because when I saved it in a flattened version, it goes to my images. So let's see if we can find it there. And there's the coaster that I just made right here. So I'm going to click on that. And what's going to happen is it's going to come in here and I'm going to place it right here okay then I'm going to do a copy and paste and we don't do a right click to copy to copy it we use we click on the object and we click duplicate and it's going to make a duplicate version now, I don't think I can get three across maybe but I'm just going to do two across um, and I'll zoom in in a minute but you can basically see in the corners where that product bleed line is okay so what I'm going to do is I'm now going to highlight both of these by holding my shift key while I select, and I'm going to do another duplicate, and this time I'm awesome. just going to go ahead and put two more in there, and cool. I'm going to do duplicate again and put two more down here. And so you see what I'm doing is I'm, I'm trying to utilize the paper by putting as many items on there as I can. And if we go ahead and do a zoom in, we'll be able to see that um, the product bleed line, you see it in the corners there. Let me go in again. There we go. That's what I wanted to do. Let me ask you a question. So, yep. really cool feature to have have nesting and and uh, really layout. But going back to the design, if you wanted to, could you have put a colored background 
behind yes. the design? I thought so. Yep. Um, and that could have been your 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 giving you your full bleed with an attractive border, if you will. Absolutely. In in fact, this program um, you can use anything for background. That, that's important. For people understand you can make anything a background, right? But there are also a whole assortment of backgrounds patterns um, available that you know none of these are appropriate for that particular patriotic but what I'm trying to tell you is there's there's so many different things when you go to exploring and um, you know I, I like some of the photo textures there's some pretty cool stuff in there so we do have a lot of background panels already built in uh, but anything could be a background you know, uh, we and I, I just want people to understand that they can put anything they want in as a background, because the key is that this is built in layers, and you'll put it in whatever you put in last is on the top, but you just select it, go to object, and hit move down, and it bing 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 moves it down behind everything else. Uh, and I'm a big believer. I, I liked. I don't like a lot of white space. I think it looks nice if you can find the right background. I think it it really adds to it. So. Anyway, Good deal. That's, that's an important thing for sublimators. You know, we we can do nesting with our Virtuoso Print Manager, but sometimes people want to do it manually, and, and this is the way that you do it. Gotcha. Now, one of the, the last things I'm going to show you real quick is uh, I want to clear that out. And, and David mentioned monograms, and, and monograms have, have proven to be um, – actually one of the most popular features within this particular system so um, let me let me look real quick I just have to be careful on that search of what's the right word um, I don't know if this is gonna find what I want or not but yeah okay we can use a phone cover that's the easiest way to go And so phone covers. By the way, you call. can't search by part number, right? You cannot. I don't know if you can do by part number. It, it, it may be. Um, I haven't tried that, David. And, and it, it all comes down to how it was loaded in, you know, who loaded it in or what the key tags are. So that's a great question. I apologize. I don't have the answer. I had asked that, and, and I thought it was either about to be in the software or very close. I will check into that. So we have a lot of different mobile device cases. And, and again, if you look for cell phone cover, it's probably the wrong thing. Mobile device case is what you need to find. Um, I'm just going to grab this uh, Galaxy case here just to, to, to do, you know, use for what I want to use. And, and um, so there we go. We have a phone case. And then we also have um, our monograms. Now, when you click on monogram, it's under templates, art templates. These are the layouts that are currently available for monograms. And if we use something like um, this particular one here, it's going to bring the monogram in. And it's it's not just an image. It's, it's actually a function. Um, you know, traditionally with a three-letter monogram, it first initial is on the left, last initial is in the middle, middle initial is on the right. And people mess that up all the time. It's kind of easy to do. And what we, we want you to understand is when you use the function, put the letters, the initials in the right order over here on the right-hand side. Okay, I'm going to use my initials. And my first one is J. So that's my first initial. Put it there first. My middle initial is M. Just go ahead and put it right in the order that, that, it, that it would be written. Okay. And then L is my last initial. Okay, so it automatically placed them in the right position. J, my first initial, M, my middle initial over here, and L in the middle. Okay, simple as that. Um, with each of these, we can you know, change the color, like L is selected right now, and so maybe I want it to be um, more of a green color. So you know, I'll apply that, and maybe I can do the same thing with the M, and do the same green there, uh, and um, use the right. 
Yeah, you may get in trouble with the monogram police. You know? Yeah, I know. I know. I, when I start doing this, I can't get in a lot of trouble with the monogram police. Okay, so but this is my letter, so I'm okay. All right. Now this is a great example, David, with with the backgrounds. Okay, because you, you have that in place, and then and and I probably will be in trouble for sure with the monogram police after I do this. Um, but we can go into the the different backgrounds. And um, you know, boy, those are all kind of kind of psychedelic. I'm not sure that's going to work for this, right? Um, yeah, looking for a chevrons or monogram or something like that. But if they had designs that they had purchased through Condi Design, right, um, they can load them <clears throat> um, into their library, right, and be able to use them. Yep. So um, at the risk of getting in trouble, because I, everyone should always remember I'm not a graphic designer, but I usually don't have to tell people that. They kind of figure it out. Okay, so um, just to just quickly drop something in there, maybe we'll throw in, boy, I'm just, I, I can't wait to hear the laughter coming through the Internet, right? Um, where, what the heck, we'll throw it in here, okay? And uh, so it'll take a minute. Sometimes the backgrounds are pretty big, but I just want to show you how it works, okay? It may not be the right background, um, but here we're just going to simply stretch this out to make it fit within the boundaries of our product template, and it's on the top layer. Last thing is top layer, so we go to object, and we're going to use that move down, and boy, this is hideous, David, but you know what I mean, um, and there's a lot of different patterns in there, but you see now how the background got moved down. This is on the top. Um, now that background, Jimmy, is a that's in in Creative Studio. Creative that's a Creative. vector element, so that it could be you could change the colors within that graphic. Um, yes, if it is when you so select you got it over on the right the colors, yeah. you can change them. So uh, just to make sure we can vividly see that, there we go. If we actually go back into our monogram unit. The monogram unit is, it, you can change um, that blue there into, you know, potentially a yellow as well. Let's see, let's apply that. So, you know, again, any anytime you see these little boxes here, you can change colors. So the monogram unit itself is that yellow circle and that white boundary. And then it has three letters on top of it. So you can change the colors of the letters by clicking on the individual letters. It gives you the option to change the color. Uh, if you click on the monogram unit itself, you have two things you can change. And then we have the background. So, so radically you, fast um, at doing that, and you just have to have an eye for complementary <laughs> colors. <laughs> you got it, OK? Um, even I can figure this out. If I play with it long enough, I'll make one to be proud of, but not right now. <laughs> that, that's slick, no doubt about it. Yeah. So those are just some of the really cool elements that we have in Creative Studio. You know, it, it doesn't do everything, but it can get you into position for printing and pressing pretty quick for a lot of the different things that you want to work with. Um, one question I get a lot of times is, can we upload our own fonts? And, and the, the, the answer is no, you cannot, at least not at this time. But what I tell people is, you know, technically, if you're putting together something and you needed a font that's not in Creative Studio, and, and it has a pretty wide range of fonts, you could go into another graphics program and actually create the line of text that you need in that font, and then save it as a, a PNG, and then upload it as like a graphic and then it just you treat it like a graphic, but you just stick it where you need it. So there, there are ways to work around some of this stuff. For, um, for those that aren't familiar with why we like PNG, uh, Jimmy, why do we like PNGs? Well, one of the things I like about a PNG is I can preserve transparency. Yes. And, you know, what um, if, if you go to create something, uh, and I don't know if I have an image sitting here right now. I may have an image that will work for us. A lot of times when we get, we have an image, and, and let's see if this one's going to do what I want it to. The the image when it's created, whoa, that is really big. Uh, let's make that small. When the image was created, you you have a you end up with this. Um, you don't see it when you're creating it, but if you save this as a JPEG, and this one's a JPEG, it, it gives you a white background, okay? And, and you realize by looking at this, this is not going to work, okay? What you want is that fish 
with that white background being transparent so that all of everything behind it would show through. And uh, when you save it as a JPEG, you lose any transparency of background. It's going to be it's going to be that white. If you say if this was created, I better point that out. If this was created without having that, that white background, so that it was transparent, if you save it to a PNG, you can save the transparency of the background. So in this case, that and I, you, it would look appropriate. You wouldn't have the white box. Okay, that's the way to put it. Amen. So, that's exactly. That's so important. Yep, and, and I have another version of this fish somewhere where a lot of times I do show that demo of here's what it looks like with transparency, here it is without. So uh, anyway, you know, if someone just tuned in, they'd really be wondering what I created here. Um, that's for sure. So, okay, David, I think it's uh, the top of the hour. We have a lot of questions, and, and I can go a little bit longer if you can so we can take on some of these questions. Let's take on the questions, Jimmy. Okay. And, you know, next time, David, I'm going to set you up where you can see the questions too. So, oh, um, I got you. I didn't. I didn't want to keep them from you. So, uh, let well, me. with my ADD personality, that that's just a distraction. <laughs> so is that fish? Okay. Uh, first question: I have a SG four hundred that I purchased a couple of years ago, but never used the Creative Studio. How do I access that again? So. First question to you, did you ever access it before? Okay. Um, it Basically what happens is when you purchase your printer, you register the, the actual printer. And when you register it, um, that's what typically gives you access to be able to get into Creative Studio. Creative Studio is found through the Sawgrass website. Um, if we go to Sawgrass website and... Um, and we at Condi can help you with this. Uh, it is it is straightforward, but basically you got to create a user account, right? Um, so that you can use Creative Studio. Right. So you would click on Creative Studio, uh, and it will um, it's going to ask you for your. And by the way, we're trying to reduce all those clicks. I've already logged in, so that didn't work. Uh, the reality is through the login process, it would ask you for your user ID and you would put it in and then it would take you in. So it's on our website where the links are. You just follow the links to Creative Studio and you log in when it asks you to and, and then you go in. But if you're not sure, contact Condi and they will be glad to help you out with that. Yeah, it's, it's really a two-part process. Getting your account set up, which is easy, and then installing VPM, which is necessary to print with. Right, the Virtuoso Print Manager. Now, I have a question here that kind of covers several different things. So I'm just not going to even read the question. I'm just going to give a quick explanation. Um, as David mentioned, you need the VPM or Virtuoso Print Manager driver to use Creative Studio. And it, the reality is you don't need Creative Studio to use VPM, but you need the VPM to use Creative Studio. The Creative Studio is in the cloud. The VPM is downloaded onto your computer. Okay, so it's a piece of software you download it, install it on the computer. Now, <clears throat> you can put VPM on different computers if you want. That's kind of where the question came from. You can put VPM on multiple computers, you know, just a, an individual program on each one. Um, you can access Creative Studio from multiple computers, okay, from multiple locations. You have your own account, and when you log in, you're logging into your account, and so you can actually access it with multiple uh, devices, you know, from different places. And as far as printing, you just have to have a virtual or print manager on the computer that drives the printer, and if you have multiple computers, you can still download your images right into them and print them on there. Yes. Did David say you can print using iPad? Almost, <laughs> almost. Almost. So you can design on an iPad, as Jimmy pointed out, but the actual design is printed from the computer that the printer is connected to. Uh, one of these days, they may have some sort of auto print feature um, that would allow things to like that happen. I suspect they're close to it now, but 
I think you need to actually go to your computer, open it, and print it, right? Correct. But we're always working on other things. In fact, here Victoria has several questions, all very good questions, because she's thinking like I do. Uh, first question is, can this be added to a website for customers to do their own design online? Um, also, can a price point be added to the design so cost of production can be seen? Uh, the, the answer currently is no to both of those. Those are great points and points that I have requested myself for the future. So I, I know that we, we definitely internally, they have looked at the concept of making this uh, a tool where you can install on your website so the customer can design their own image. Uh, their own product. Um, currently, that's not an option for you, but just stay tuned. I mean, I just well, I, I, I would say I would say that there's a way to sort of do it now. There is, and so so if you we we push a, a vendor's product called I Personalize. Oh, I Personalize yeah. is a designer like Creative Studio. You can call it a competitor, um, and but but certainly a product is a product. You know. A, four by four coaster is still a four by four coaster. So you could you could take the print file from iPersonalize, drop it into a hot folder, and and now VPM will process a hot folder uh, in an auto print mode, I believe. Yes. That is correct. So if you if you really, really wanted to do it, I think you could. I'm not sure it would necessarily be a wise thing because um, you really need a tag on the print to indicate where it came from. But, but certainly those days are probably not too far away. Yes, okay. Um, someone pointed out, and, and it's it, there, with the product mock-up maker, uh, they pointed out it doesn't work for mugs. And it's true, it doesn't work for mugs because it cannot print a show a rounded image around the mug. So I understand what you're saying there. I'd love to see that happen. I don't know how complex that is. Um, so it doesn't work for every product, like rounded products like that, or cylindrical. Let me say cylindrical, but it does work with a flat product. So we may see some some more things like that show up uh, in the future. Um, how do you know which text you've used before and and I'll be honest if you choose a text and you put it into an image it doesn't tell you what that text is conveniently on the screen so people have been asking for that to say it would be really nice especially when I'm doing multiple lines that I didn't have to remember which font I used that there was something you know in the object list that says it was this font uh, and know that currently you just kind of have to go back and try to figure out which font you used um, but there's a lot let me tell you Creative Studio is always in development, and I honestly can't tell you what's next on the list because no one tells me. But you know, it's one of these things that's been evolving. If you look at Creative Studio when we first released it versus where it is today, I mean, it has made leaps and bounds forward. And I appreciate every one of the things that, that people ask about that maybe we don't have. I'm, I read all these things, and, and believe me, I, I pass them along, okay? And that's what we want to hear from you. We, we always want to hear what you think we need and what we can do better. And we will do our best to implement where we can, you know, those types of and things. And I can tell you that's absolutely true. The, the remarkable progress of Creative Studio is almost scary. Um, it's now morphing into a, a very interesting decorating platform. Um, you know, sometime in the future, web hooks, as we've talked about, um, I think it's a, a great resource for, say, a, a um, afternoon employee that really isn't plugged into Corel or Photoshop to produce products for a, a you know, a storefront, a kiosk kind of a situation. But it can be tied into other resources. In fact, it could be tied into um, our Condi kiosk because our Condi kiosk provides a conduit to get the image from somebody's phone to your laptop once there you could open it with creative studio place it and put, maybe put some nice text in print another question here will there be an android app to use creative studio in a point in time there is not currently an app 
but you can use an Android to access Creative Studio Online and then use it from there. Yeah, it's sort of a strange question because you don't need an app to right. use Creative Studio. It's a it's a native HTM, uh, HTML5 application, so it just runs on uh, whether you have an iOS, Apple device, Android device, um, whatever. I have a Windows tablet. And, and it runs on all those devices. Can you upload additional shirt blanks to Creative Studio? We're the only ones that can put those in currently. Um, if, if you have a product that you're using and you, you can't find it in Creative Studio, and keep in mind that we, we expand it almost weekly, um, let us know, okay? And we'll see. Um, because we're, we always are trying to put in you know, the blanks that, that people need. Let's see. I just purchased my printer and was told that I could use Creative Studio as well as Corel, but when they installed the printer, they told me how to choose Creative Studio or Corel. Um, I don't so know. Th uh, if we said that, I think we may have not listened to you careful enough, but, but ultimately all our solutions as far as the installation solutions can be tailored to your needs. So if you want to use Creative Studio, great, um, and you want to use, say, anything else, uh, we absolutely can tailor those solutions. I think sometimes uh, we don't want people to be schizophrenic in that they can't make up their mind. Um, and so, you know, having a focus while you're going to do your designs is certainly helpful. But absolutely, we can set it up um, so that, you know, you can print from any application um, and print from uh, Creative Studio all at the same time. Um, let's see. I'm reading. <laughs> um, still some different questions about uploading your own things. You can upload your own images as long as it's JPEG or PNG. You cannot upload product templates. You cannot op upload art templates, per se, um, or fonts. But as long as you have an, an image as a PNG or a JPEG, you can upload it and it will be stored in your, your My Images folder. Yeah, let me jump in and ask, answer one common question that comes up as far as the limitations. So the Creative Studio is really a very tailored solution for the virtuosos, the templates, the artwork, um, and the tools. So it is restricted as far as printing to virtuoso printers. So if you happen to have an inkjet, a laser printer, or whatever, other than the, the virtuoso printers, um, it, it's it's not for that. Okay, there was a question in here. Um, just no, that's not the one I want. Um, now I can't find it, but I know what it was in my head, so I'm gonna go ahead and answer it. Uh, they said that they had purchased an SG800, uh, and it's still in the box. Okay, I hate to hear that. It's still in the box. It needs to come out of the box. Okay. Uh, but anyway, the question goes, it's still in the box. Um, I heard somewhere that you needed to use a swing away press, um, or it's better to use a swing away press, but I have a Stahl's clamshell. Is it necessary to have a swing away? No. I like swing aways better. And, um, and I'll give you my personal input, and I'm going to let Davey give you his. Um, one of the things about a swing away is if we start doing thicker items, and, and we do have some pretty, you know, if you talk about um, flip-flops are pretty thick. If you talk about plaques, they can be get pretty thick. Um, you, you have more even pressure on something thick when you're using a swing away press because the upper platen is parallel to the bottom platen when they close. Whereas a clamshell, depending on the clamshell, you may, on a thick product, have more pressure on one end of it than the other. 
But yes, you can use a clamshell for sublimation. My preference is a swing away, but if you have a clamshell, you should be able to start sublimating. So, David, I'll let you talk a little bit about heat presses as well. So, first rule of thumb is use what you have. So, if you have a clamshell press, that's what you need to be using. Um, if you ever buy another press, we would recommend you buy a swing away or a drawer style press. And, and the reason is very simple for even contact. Uh, clamshell presses close at the back before they close at the front. They typically don't handle thick substrates very well. Slate is challenging. So if you have a clamshell press, I recommend you push thick items towards the back of the press and to turn the, uh, the substrate into a landscape fashion. Um, and that way you've, you've got the best shot at, when you close the press of having good, even contact with the substrate. Um, and if you encounter problems with any of this, of course, we're, we're available to assist you. Okay, David, I think I'm going to wrap up here. We do still have uh, questions, and they do keep coming in. That's great. But um, unfortunately, we do have to kind of get to that point where we wrap up. Um, I would like to say that, you know, first of all, thank you for all your questions. And keep that in mind that if you need Hey, Jimmy, I want to give a, um, a oh, call. Oh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, so for everybody that's uh, been part of the webinar or watching it on Condi TV, for your next order, um, you'll get a free uh, one of the new Unisub Garden Stakes. These are outdoor stakes. The part number that's part of this free offer is the U4774. U4774. The only qualification is that your order be $100 or more. Awesome. Awesome. So anyway, um, I just wanted anybody that didn't get a question answered or you still have other questions, um, contact Condi. I mean, that's what they're there for. They'll do everything they can to help you out. Um, you can also feel free to contact Sawgrass. I mean, we're there too. I mean, we yeah, want we're a you good guys team, to, uh, to be good successful. team, and so we look forward to helping you. My best tip for everybody out there is document. Document what we're talking about, your questions, your successes, your failures, and uh, if you watch my videos, uh, make sure that you create your wall of shame so that <laughs> you can keep up with um, with what you're doing, uh, don't like, don't do like us men do. Um, you know, we make a mistake, we want to throw it away, get rid of it, want to forget we ever made it. We all need to learn by our mistakes. And I guess my last tip is, you know, you you know, like the person that has a printer in the box. You know, so we all learn to drive a car. Um, when we learn to drive a car, we didn't get on the interstate day one. We learned to back it out, maybe go around the. Uh, the, the neighborhood, something like that. And that's the same way with sublimation. You're going to need to practice, take those steps uh, slowly or as quick as you can. But yes, like anything else, uh, there's a little bit of a learning curve. Our videos, our support people, myself, we stand ready to assist you. Awesome. Well, David, I had a great time here today. And, uh, you know, you and I are doing one of these every month. So, uh, Next month is the most popular subject that you and I have ever done together, and that ah, is yes. sublimation pricing. Yeah, we're going to have a lot of fun with that. Uh, till we meet next time, guys, uh, thank you for your participation. Look forward to serving you. See you later, everyone. Have a great day. Take care.